We're going to move into the gallery. So, I'll give you this mic to whoever I call first, and then you can just leave it there. The gallery. We have three minutes to speak. Please address the board at all times. Unless you fill out a slip, I'm sorry. This is our protocol. This is how you speak in a, a committee board meeting from the public. Please keep silent. Questions are can only be asked by board members. So the first uh, gallery session speaker will be Justine Dorrett. Uh, always affordable. Okay. Not sure how you pronounce this. I will not so see. after after uh, two minutes and thirty seconds, Brando here, Zagreta, will raise the thirty second sign, and then he'll bang the gavel at three minutes. Sure, can you make the volume a little Yeah. Is this one better? Yep. Please take this one and then you can just leave it up there okay. when you're done. So, Fran, how's your time? So just pay attention to me. We've been in business about seven years. We're fully licensed and insured. We service all five boroughs, Westchester and Long Island. Mm -hmm. And we specialize in all aspects of chimney maintenance and repair. Uh, any sort of repairs that you need to the chimney, be it masonry repairs, dampers, we do both residential and commercial, as well as miners. And we're one of the only certified installers of Huron Flex Mining Systems which prevent you having to open up the wall if you need to line your chimney. That's most common in like older buildings in the city or brownstones. Um, we do have business cards as well as coupons that we brought with us. It's always a free estimate for us to come out. And you can see everything on our website, www.alwaysaffordablechimney.com. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. First question, Marcy. Bye. Justine, thanks for coming out from Long Island. Hello. Thank you for coming out here from Long Island. Predominantly, the reason she's here, she is a social service, and I am on the Committee for Health and Social Services along with Joe. You know, carbon monoxide is a very serious thing, and the reason I brought her here is because of the importance of having your house checked regularly. We found it in my basement about 10 years ago, and I had to have the whole chimney relined, and it was very important to make sure that everybody in the family is safe. Sometimes your detectors are not the best way to make sure the safety in your house, but your chimney is really, it's critical. So she's here, and I uh, just want to give her some gratitude for driving out from Long Island tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we want to Manny Martinez, your public library. So good evening everyone, thank you for having me here, I hope everyone enjoyed their summer, it's been a long time since I've been here, um, I just want to say thank you all, thank you all, the board, the community here for supporting the libraries, um, you know, we're off to a really good start. We've been doing really well for the fall with um, communicating with the schools, communicating with local daycares. Um, my branch, along with uh, Pelham Parkway, Van Ness, and Morris Park, have now became a family early literacy branch. So what, that, what, what they want us doing is they want us targeting more of uh, babies, uh, younger, basically from birth to about the age of two, three years old. They want us conducting more programs for those and also engaging with the parents. So what we, what we have been doing is hosting family literacy workshops. And what those do is basically, it shows parents how to engage with their children, um, how to read to children. And we've been providing a lot of incentives uh, to give away. We've been having you know snacks, refreshments for the parents to come uh, to these uh, workshops. We are hosting them once a month. They usually take place in the mornings. But we also have story times now for, um, for parents, families to come in and bring their children so they can uh, learn, you know, they'll sing songs to the children, uh, they read stories to them, they have sensory toys that they can play with and engage in with other children there at the library. Another thing that I wanted to um, 
speak about is uh, the open house. I am having my first annual open house. So hopefully we, we're looking to continue doing this um, throughout throughout the years coming. And this open house, I basically wanna I wanna I wanna be able to provide information to the community, but we also connect other other businesses, other organizations together. Because sometimes in this community, I feel that a lot of people don't know what's out there, what's in the community. So on no Friday, November 18th, from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., we're gonna host our open house. So far, I got about 18 participants. If anyone knows any business, any organization, anyone in this community that would like to participate and get information out there to the community, you can reach out to me. My email address is Manuel Martinez, so it's M-A-N-U-E-L-M-A-R-T-I-N-E-Z at nypl.org. So that once again, that'll be Friday, November 18th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. I'll start sending out the flyer. I will have, um, I got some flyers over there. Another, another event we're having is, uh, so at my branch, we do the, um, the ESO classes as well as Morris Park, as well as uh, Pelham Parkway Van Ness. I've noticed that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of people that are coming from outside of the country and that need help with like citizenship. So we managed to get someone from the Department of uh, USCIS, and uh, that'll be on Wednesday, November 16th. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? Good. So our next guest speaker will be Shyla Trammell. Maybe I just pronounced the name, 1541 Williamsburg Road. Good evening, Good evening everyone. My name is Shayla Tramal. I'm coming from the Williamsbridge um, Tennis Association, and I'm going to be introducing Paulette, who will um, have a Board for uh, allowing us to speak this evening. I'm head of the Williamsbridge Tenants Association. We represent tenants at the Woodmanson Apartments. Now, many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with this building. It's been there for a long time, as I have. I grew up there. Uh, it's the large building on the corner of Williamsbridge and Sagan Avenue. Our major problem right now is a slumlord, an absentee landlord, who is not only affecting the building, the welfare of the tenants but the actual existence of this community. Um, through the years, I've heard many people from the area comment about what he's done, his negligence, his disregard for everyone in the community, and it's getting worse. Right now, we're in litigation with this man in court. We were going back on November 7th. He is doing something at the building that is illegal. He's doing uh, what he calls a building rehabilitation, which I thought was a response to my six-page report three years ago. It's not. What he's doing is invading every apartment, claiming, first of all, to get the permits that we don't live there and that we're not going to save lives. Two big lives. What he's doing is invading the apartments, demolishing wow. a large portion of the apartments to so supposedly upgrade the plumbing and electrical systems. The plumbing system is the biggest problem, and it is an extreme danger to the health and safety of the tenants. But my concern and the reason I'm here right now is to ask for support from the community because I know there are many people in this community that have voiced their concern over what this man is doing by neglecting the building, letting it go down. For a long time, he brought in very bad tenants. Thank God many of them are gone. But the purpose for that was to drive the good ones out and the old ones. This cannot continue. If you have any issues with the building, the history of the building, anything that you know regarding the, the building, its maintenance, even what is going on with, with the tenants in that community. Please bring those issues to the attention of the community board. We will be picking up this information, taking it with us, and it will just, it will bolster our case in court. So unfortunately, or unfortunately, we had a judge who ignored the fact that he lied on the applications to get the permits, gave him access. That's what we're fighting now. So any assistance you can give us, any information you have, 
your, just your views on what this man has done to the, the community, the Morris Park community, we would appreciate very much. And I thank you very much for your time. Question? Al? Why don't you have the tenants come before the housing committee of the board? Mm -hmm. And this way they can, you know, explain it that they'll be your right advocate. What does the housing committee mean? Uh, where's housing? Strano. Strano? Mm -hmm. November first. November first. Very good at, idea. At the community board at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock here? No, I'm cold. The community board. Fine. Cold All right. Avenue. So you'll know, come in with your list of, of complaints, mm -hmm. and a few people that can come in and, and uh, also voice their concerns. And right. Bring it before them, and then they'll be your advocate. All right. Thank you so much, Al. Appreciate it. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Paula Velasquez. I've been dealing with Paula for a while. She's a, a great person. Uh, she's from the Citizens Committee. What? what? Thank you. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Laura Velasquez, and I'm a college intern at Citizen Committee. So we're trying to do community outreach to inform the communities um, in all five boroughs of our two upcoming grants. One is a Love Your Block grant for $1,000. The deadline is November 7th. The second is our neighborhood grant, and the deadline is January 23rd of 2017. Um, we are a nonprofit organization, and we try to do our best to support volunteer-led um, groups that try to um, have, carry out projects in, the, in their neighborhood to improve their community. Um, for more information, you could visit us at our website, citizensnewyorkcity.org and um, on their website you could also call us and the main contact person would be Sean Whitehorn. Um, any questions? What's the number? 212-822-9563. Any, any other questions? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. We want to thank you for the time. Um, vendors, we want to bring to the attention of the board, if it's not already in your uh, scope, the city council is trying to double the size of street vendors uh, in the city, 600 every year for the next seven years. Wow. We have 4,100 uh licensed vendors now and they want to double that. Wow. Uh, necessarily, um, I kind of like the idea, but I'm going to say to you, Alexon can't maintain new vendors. Uh -uh. So there has to be some sort of um, restriction or guideline. Uh, 10 vendors a year is, is probably the average for every community board. Um, right now we have about five to six vendors on Alexon alone. I'll, I'll talk with Joe and, and uh, Morris Park on, on their opinion on it as well, but this is uh, my own personal opinion, Allerton can't maintain 10 vendors um, a year, let alone 10 every single year. So please keep this in your attention. I've spoken with the, uh, the vendors on Allerton. We're all pretty much in agreement. Um, also, especially if they're selling the same merchandise as stores in the vicinity, our guys are already struggling uh, as it is. So to have more competition that's paying less is just not fair to these guys. Uh, if this is going to get jammed through the city council, there better be a, a subsidy for these merchants to make sure that they, they stay in business. Um, since I have some more time and I don't see the 30 seconds, uh, we're doing a pumpkin carving at 6.30 tomorrow on Bronxwood and Allerton Avenue. Uh, we sent a letter to the community board um, regarding the area of the, the Bronxwood tree. Uh, technically, it's called the Boston Garden. Um, for obvious reasons to those who, who watch sports, Boston Garden is the name of the stadium in Boston. Um, so as a Nick fan, I'm offended greatly. But um, in all seriousness, I think it would be more uh, aptly renamed the Allerton Garden or the Bronxwood uh, Garden. And uh, since I still don't see, I had a great conversation with U-Haul. Um, this is if through the chair, if I can uh, refer this to Joe, um, but you as well, to know that um, they're very much engaged, they're aware of the problem, and we're going to continue a conversation with them as well. 
Uh, thank you for the time. Oh, and the uh, the Mother Teresa mural is complete. Check it out and shop uh, at the local stores nearby on Holland and Allerton Avenue. Thank you. Jing, Jing. After the meeting, can you come up? Well, I got to talk to you about that uh, the vendors. All right. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Mike. Anthony, I know you're going to escalate the issue about the vendors. It's not fair to the people who are paying rent and they have their stores. I know we're going to escalate that. I just want to know when and how. Well, it's kind of complicated because, you know, you got White Plains bid, you got uh, Westchester bid, and you're going to have Morris Park trying to get a bid. Now, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I got a call yesterday. I was made aware of it. And I have a letter saying, you sent to the uh, city council president, saying, no, we're not, we're not backing this. Is not back this because there's, you know, these people won't, as in Palmer's Park, they won't even join us here. They're going to lay out no money and then they're going to make a vendor come right next door to them. It's kind of complicated, Gene. Yeah. And uh, there's, no, there's no support for this in our area. Thank you. Thank you. Great to hear. Any other questions? Sounds like you supported it. No. Well, I just wanted to know uh, did I hear that? When did the board vote on this? I, I wasn't here. I got a telephone call for John and Aunt Denise uh, two days ago. Two days ago. Okay, that's when I first found out about it. He was on the phone for an hour. He was looking for the board support. He, uh, the other boards are also supporting. So the letter had to go in today, this afternoon. So uh, we are meeting tonight. They had a hearing today at uh, yeah. the city council. So I had, that to, I had to get the minute. letter down. So uh, the exact, we, we voted this, we sent the letter down, okay, Joe, against the against the, the request. Well, not not for nothing, but I think, if nothing else, we could have sent it down today. I mean, the hearings are going to be going on. I don't think it was, I mean, I, I was I was watching Road to City Hall the other night, Mark Levine was on, he's the guy that's proposing this. And it... It, it's not a done deal. I mean, it's not. It's a process that they have to go through the uh, city council, and I think we should have voted on it. Yeah, bodies. Yeah, Bob, it's on. Is there any way to like lobby for regulations within this legislation that like you can't have X amount like close to each other or so many within a block? It sounds like the harm in the. The risk is an oversaturation of the block. Everyone's kind of concerned about that, but it seems like something we could lobby on to build into the law, too. There are restrictions. I'm sorry. Uh, there are restrictions. There, there are laws, you know, to govern in that there, okay? That's all I can tell you. Do I know? I don't know. No. May I make a suggestion that you take a vote now, even after the fact? At least this way you cover yourself that we have voted and we either approve or disapprove of the, of the letter. Jeremy, do you need me up here anymore? Can I sit? Uh, uh, Jane, you can sit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, let, let me read the letter that was sent, okay? And uh, we'll have a motion. Uh, I'll make a motion that we support uh, the, uh, the letter. This is, sent, this is sent to the city council president. Honorable Lisa Mark Verietto, Speaker, New York City Council. Dear Council Speaker Verietto. Am I saying it right? No. <laughs> community Board 11. Uh, community Board 11 would like to express our strong opposition to the bill before the council regarding adding more vendors to our streets, period. In our district, we have many mom and pop stores that provide jobs and services to our community. Their businesses pay high rents as well as utility costs and are struggling to survive in this very difficult economy. They also pay many fees and at times fines to the city of New York. In addition, we have two bids in our district, the Pelham Parkway bid and the Westchester Square bid. Both are, have voiced very strong opposition to adding more vendors on our streets. We believe that these vendors create an unfair competition to our already existing businesses. Signed, Anthony Vitaliano.
First of all, it's the White Plains Road bit. So that has to be changed before you send the letter or when you amend the letter. Um, and we are opposed to it. And it's not just the White Plains Road bid or the Westchester Square bid. All the bids in the city of New York are opposed to this for the exact same reason that uh, it's already been mentioned uh, by Gene and others um, and Andrea. We do have businesses, uh, especially in a bid, everybody pays a fee uh, to belong to the bid. And that includes holiday lighting, that includes uh, sanitation. So it's, it's even more important that uh, these people will come along and mm -hmm. they will increase uh, the garbage mm -hmm. on the street. Yep. They will make sure that they will receive all the benefits that our members receive, mm -hmm. that our members pay for it. So yeah, uh, the White Plains Road bid hasn't sent its letter out yet, but the White Plains Road bid will send its letter out and, uh, and uh, explain a lot of the things that we feel that I've mentioned here. So when you make the motion, make sure that we make the corrections. Make the motions. The motion to send this, uh, which has already been su uh, submitted to the uh, city council president, to support the letter. A motion to support the letter with the change, Pell Parkway bid changed to White Plains Road bid. Okay? Any, uh, do I have a second on that motion? Second. Silvio? Okay. All those, uh, all those open for discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Against? Abstentions? Pete Rams abstention and Aunt Maria Provenzano uh, and Daisy, Daisy Rodriguez. Three abstentions. Okay. Uh, the motion is. Thank you. Okay, our next guest speaker is. Forgive me if I mispronounce any names, because it's sometimes a little hard to read the writing. Tiara Moultrie, uh, MJHS Hospice and uh, Palliative Care. Good evening. Um, my name is Tiara Moultrie. I'm the Bronx Volunteer Coordinator with MJHS Hospice. I'm actually here because we're looking to recruit volunteers for some of our nursing homes in the East Bronx specifically for Beth Abe and Kings Harbor Rehabilitative and Nursing Home Centers. In addition to the nursing homes that we have in the East Bronx, we also have people who are on home hospice in the area, and we also have IPU beds in every Monty facility. The main reason why we're looking to recruit volunteers is because we work with patients at end of life. I think for most people, mortality isn't a thing that they think about very often, and so we have a very difficult time recruiting volunteers, even to do mundane things. Our volunteers can sit with patients, they can do general compassionate care visits. They're also committed to do things like shopping for patients, taking them on trips. And when we have foundation support, we also have the opportunity to take people to Yankee games or to take people to other events. In addition to working with uh, usually an elderly population in the nursing homes, we also have one of the only pediatric hospice in New York State. Yeah. Uh, so you can be able to provide support for actual peace patients. You can also provide support for their families, especially in people in need of respite care. Um, so our main goal is to try to connect with other community groups and really to try to drive up volunteer support in our nursing homes and for other residents of the East Bronx who are on our hospice program. So I also have a lot of flyers in the back, but the easiest way to reach me um, is either through email or on my cell phone. It's 347-988-4043, 347-988-4043. And in addition to our facilities here, I actually represent the entire Bronx, so most of my day is spent on the bus because like a true New Yorker, I do not drive. But we have two hospice residences, one in Riverdale, one at the Block Residence Cate House near the VA Hospital on Kingsbridge. And then again, we do have several people who are on home hospice, and that includes both kids and adult patients. Uh, 
Uh, do you represent the new leadership of Beth Aid? Uh, no. So, we have contracted Beth and Beth Abraham, uh, but all of the people who are on MJHS hospice have care within the nursing home, but they also receive MJHS hospice visits. So they get volunteers as a service of MJHS. They also have an MJHS assigned nurse, social worker, bereavement coordinator, um, and pastoral care that comes from us specifically, as well as the support they get in the unit. Is this non-for-profit or is this for-profit? We're a non-profit organization. Okay, thank you. So what do the letters stand for, the MJ? Yeah. On an official level, it stands for Metropolitan Jewish Health System. Um, in general, we use the acronym because we found that people get very confused and assume that we only take on Jewish patients, but that is not the case. So, officially, we are just MJHS hospital. Yes. Two questions. Can I ask Is it a kosher facility? Um, so, only our facility in Riverdale is kosher. You have the kosher option, right? Yes. Good. That has to be. And um, the other thing is, is this sure. work? Is this working? Might be working? There's only two questions to be asked. That was one question. Sorry, Marcy. Oh. Next uh, speaker, guest speaker, Kathy Vasquez. Uh-huh. Hello, good evening. My name is Kathy Vasquez. I am the project coordinator for the New York City Campus Project hosted at the New York Botanical Garden. I want to say thank you for allowing me to talk about my program. Um, the New York City or NYC Campus Project helps New Yorkers build the knowledge, skills, and opportunities they need to make and use compost locally. So the reason that I'm here today is because we are completely funded by the Department of Sanitation and we are trying to um, inform your community board about the leaf collection service that will be happening in November. So on November 11th, sorry, on uh, Sunday, November 13th and Sunday, November 27th, um, New York City Department of Sanitation will be picking up leaves from all of community board 11 so that they, that can be composted and that compost will be used in uh, community green projects. Um, the New York City Compost Project will actually be uh, distributing free leaf bags and more material. So if you need leaf bags to collect your leaves, you can come visit our table. We'll be back there. We also are hosting a bunch of different events throughout the Bronx, so we can distribute leaf bags to all the other community boards that are served. And if you are interested in learning how to backyard compost, we, will, we actually do uh, workshops and events that teach people how to uh, compost in their backyard. If you need to contact us, my information is compost at nybg.org, and if you need to call us, it's 718-817-8543. Any questions? Yes. Yes. Why, please? Do they have anything, any projects for apartment buildings? I mean, I, I know you're giving out two, three bags, whatever it takes, but I mean, the building that I live in, the corner building, and this guy's picking up leaves all the time. What does he do with the leaves he picks up now? I mean, he can't leave them in these bags in the rain and stuff like that, can he? No, he can't leave them in the bags in the rain. So unfortunately, because they're only doing two pickup dates, he would only be able to set out the leaves he's collecting on those two weekends. Yeah. Okay, so where, where does he get the bags? Because he's going to need more than two or three. So he can pick up the bags from us, or he can pick up the bags, or he can purchase bags from any of the retailers that are in the Bronx. Well, where does he get them from you? Uh, there is a bunch of information in the back that lists all of our events. Thank okay. You to to. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Mary Ella Salazar from Montefiore. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mary Ella Salazar, and I am the Government and Community Relations Manager at Montefiore. I just wanted to take the opportunity to introduce myself as I will be regularly attending these meetings. I do have one short uh, announcement and that's that the open enrollment period for the 2017 health insurance plan will begin November 1st. So a few dates for you to, remi to remember are that again, November 1st is when you can begin to enroll, re-enroll, or change your insurance plan. December 15th will be the last day to enroll in or change your plan for coverage to start January 1st. January 1st 
if you enrolled by December 15th, that you will have insurance by January um, 1st. And January 31st will be the last day that you can enroll for insurance through the New York State Health Exchange website. So other than that, um, if anybody needs assistance in uh, enrolling or you have questions about which plan is best for you, I have um, a sheet here that has a whole bunch of sites in the Bronx about navigators that can help answer those questions, which plan is best for you, um, and all those other details that um, a navigator can answer. So, does anybody have any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you, and I look forward to working with you guys. Thank you. Uh, Marsha Lewis? I'm not sure uh, the issue is or the organization. Yeah, the issue is so in the future, you could put that through. Oh, all right. It's or not part issue. of an organization. Or the issue. I would like to express a bit of the frustration felt by the Pecker community. There have been multiple projects within the area of the auspices of the Parks Department. Many have been very expensive, very long, some considered unnecessary, and they're left unfinished and unattended or tended to. We question the bidding process and the oversight of our tax dollars. BPECA has secured over a million dollars to repair the Waring Avenue playground in the past two years. The playground has had no upgrade in over 30 years. We were just told last night the Parks Department now needs $5 million or it cannot be done. And they, two years ago they said it was $2 million. So it's more than doubled. Uh -huh. With nothing, nothing done. We have the grounds where the kids, the little kids play. The rubber is all broken up. It's very dangerous. They've patched the area where the sprinklers are. The basketball courts have roots coming through the, the ground. The hoops are falling down. It, nothing in 30 years. We've seen numerous plantings also in unneeded bike path repairs that were not needed that are finished 90% and are now neglected and unfinished. And this has been going on for over a year. They leave the trees surrounded with fencing. The weeds are taking over the trees and choking them. They have not been watering the trees and many have died. Pella Parkway North and White Plains Road Park Upgrade, or the mall as they call it, has been fenced in. It's probably about four square blocks. You hardly ever see anyone working on it. It's filthy, there's an increase in rodents, the merchants are complaining, and you don't see people working there. So we wanna know who's supervising the project, who's cleaning up after the project, and who oversees the bidding on the projects. Um, wanna know who the contractors are, we should know who they are, not hire them again, because Pella Parkway North is going to be redone soon. By blocking off those four blocks with the fencing, they've increased the danger of the students from Columbus and other neighboring schools walking in the area because the sidewalks have been taken away. It's an eyesore. Um, also, there have been increased planting of trees in the middle of Helen Parkway, the Christmas trees we all talk about. Now they put up two tupelos at the bottom of the Waring Avenue entrance to the Botanical Gardens. This has taken away the ability for the children to sleigh ride in a safe area, something that's been going on for over two generations that I know of. I don't know before that. But now there's no sleigh riding in the park, and I really thought parks were for our use. So we're requesting the community board Thank to you. do... Thank to you. Man, I'm, I'm done? Yes. yes. Questions? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, sorry. Last night, I understand you any of these complaints to her? Yes. So Repeatedly. And what was her response? That the Parks Department budget is only for $2 million for restoration of parks, which for the we borough. have a, oh, wait, that doesn't make sense. Exactly. The Parks Department, <laughs> we were told the Parks Department has $2 million for the upkeep of the parks, restoration, upkeep of the different parks. For the entire Bronx. And she told us that now the estimate is $5 million after we've raised $1.4 million. That's what they have in the coffers. Mm -hmm. So therefore, they cannot do it because they will not start unless they have the full $5 million. It's been two years that we've been getting the money, and the cost has more than doubled. Uh -huh. Getting back to the arrest, um, 